Hi, welcome to Ben and Barry on football. Uh, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I am an avid Madden fan and I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. Uh, my compadre here, I'm Ben Dickerson. I'm a fantasy football enthusiast. I'm really into these Net Point Power Rankings, which I hope you're loving also. And uh, we're about to get into this week's schedule. <clears throat> yes, this is the matchup uh, show. Now, um, let me just say congrats to uh, my compadre here. He does coach in the Philadelphia Tough Touch Football League. It's actually a flag league, and uh, you guys had a playoff game this week. Yes, yes, we won uh, a first-round playoff game. So if you go to the Facebook page, Ben and Barry on football, you have an opportunity to see this guy uh, after the game. <laughs> Not much of a celebration, but uh, uh, hey, hey, he had your signature. Hey, got our eyes on the prize, man, one game at a time. One game. Yeah, I didn't invent that. Ah, week 10 of the NFL 2018 season. Uh, week 9, we had a lot of surprises. Um, you did really well week 9. In your yes, picks. I did. In your picks. Philly Net Point Power Rankings, the uh, the uh, bias held up, bias plus held up 61.5% of the time. Mm -hmm. What were your I picks? I wanted 11 for 15. What's that? 11 for 15. That's, That's, a lot. Lot. That's more like 80%. That's somewhere. pretty good. That's, That's pretty good. I should have bet bad. money. I should have bet money last week. should have bet some money, you know? Um, so, yeah, this, you know, we try to bring you good information. And again, just to kind of quickly talk about our methodology. And before I do, let me mention hit the subscribe button so that you'll continue to get um, our videos when we put them up. And the uh, notification bell so you'll get something you can have it come your phone whatever that works out to be so when we when we put up these videos um but just to quickly go over the methodology because everything is fundamentally based on the sterling net point power rankings and net points being the differential between the points scored and the points allowed uh is how we rank everything is how we it's the, the baseline of how we look at what we look at the bias we have two levels of bias. We have a net point bias. The mm -hmm. net point bias is the differential between the net points of the two teams. So if you have one team that has a, a net points of, say, plus five, uh, because there are negatives, half the league is in the negative at any one particular time. For example, the Buffalo Bills are 32nd uh, with minus 145, mm -hmm. okay, uh, in terms of net points. The... Um, so the differential between the two teams, if one team has uh, five net points and the other team has 100 net points, uh, the bias would be with, uh, with favor, the team with 100 net points, and the bias number would be the differential, which is nine. And then we add to that the turnover difference. 95. 95. Thank you. Um, then we add to that the turnover differential. So again, this is the difference between what teams are uh, giving away versus their takeaways. And we rank those on a scale of 1 to 32 also. And then we add that differential um, to the bias. To the bias, and that is the bias plus. So if you got all of that, great. Keep watching. Check out the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings, uh, my blog post, where we talk a little bit more in depth and can actually read through and maybe take your time and, and pick up on that information. Um, but it's, it's very informative. So let's start. The week is starting off with a bang. With a bang. Tomorrow it's night's game looks like a good one. Bang, man. I'm Thursday night, I will have my popcorn ready. Yes, sir. Because the Carolina Panthers are going into Pittsburgh, Steel Town, to deal with the Steelers. And the Steelers just beat up on the, the Ravens. Yes, they did. And the Panthers, who did they beat up on last week? Uh, the Panthers, yeah. where are they at? The Carolina, oh, probably, we, we probably wanted to put it out of our mind, Tampa Bay. That's why I can't remember because it wasn't a game that I really <laughs> wanted to, uh, to do, you know, was real know. interested in. Uh, but, but we talked about Fitz, Fitz Magic and Fitz Tragic, and you know, the fact of the matter is they had one of the worst defenses in the league. So, uh, Carolina went in there, did their thing. Um, the bias, net point bias between the two teams, Ben. Yes, sir. Do you see that net point bias? Yes. It's one point. 
there's a one point net point bias favoring Carolina in this game. However, with the turnover margin bias of 11, mm-hmm. they're doing a lot better than the Steelers in that category. A lot better. Gives them a bias plus of 12, which is razor thin between the two teams. I mean, if you look at 12 points over, what, 10 games? Yeah. It's like a point a game. So, really, this is going to be a battle. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, a 12-point bias plus is not large. In fact, it's very small. Um, both of these teams are really, <clears throat> really playing well on offense right now. Carolina has been progressively playing better on defense, and the Steelers are slowly playing better on defense, but their offense is clicking. Mm. Now, on the surface, or at least in my mind, if the Steelers are going to be at home and Carolina's coming in but playing really well, then I'm going to look at the team with the best offense, the team that's really, really clicking on offense. That would be the Steelers in there at home, in my mind. But the reason that we tell you about the net point power rankings and make sure that you watch the other videos and, and become familiar with them is the reason why I'm picking Carolina in this game. Number one, it's a tough game to pick. But I'm going to go with Carolina because – Carolina is better than the Steelers in net points, although the difference is only one net points overall. But in points against, the Panthers are better. And in turnover margin, they are far superior. And that may be just enough to pull this out for them. Unless, of course, Le'Veon comes back. I'm not worried about that. Just a joke. It's just a joke. (laughs) I'm not going to worry about Lady down to like week 13 or something. <laughs> Great game. Though. I'm looking forward to this game. All right, let's move to Sunday. We have Sunday. Detroit mm-hmm. going into Chicago. Mm-hmm. Chicago has a 112 net point bias and a 13 uh, turnover margin bias, giving them a bias plus of 125 points. And the Lions just traded away one of their best receivers to the Eagles. Yep. Golden Tate. Okay, again, familiar side, familiarize yourself with the net point power rankings. The Bears are the only team that are in the top five in every category. Nothing to see here. Bears at home. They're going to win that game. Not going to argue with you on that. New Orleans, Cincinnati. Now, that's an interesting game. Uh, New Orleans has a net point bias of 77 points. Mm-hmm. Cincinnati has a turnover margin by four turnovers in their favor. Mm-hmm. Four. But it only brings the bias plus score down a little bit. The bias plus favors New Orleans at 73. Score 73. Seems like I'm thinking about this really hard, doesn't it? Forget about it. Drew Brees, Drew Brees and the boys got way too much for Cincinnati. Their defense is really, really shaky. I mean, they play hard. They're obviously a good unit. They got a lot of uh, uh, injuries, guys playing out of position. There's holes to be found. 23rd ranked and defensively yeah, giving up 218 that's, points. That's really low. And uh, the, the, the Saints just have too much offense for them. They have a turnover differential of zero. <laughs> so they're Which is even worse. Okay? If you, Why is it worse? A zero? I mean, that means they... Oh, that means they gave up as many turnovers as they got. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't make it worse, but it's not impressive. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're not... They're, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Drew Brees isn't throwing a lot of... He's not going through... He, he threw his first pick last week. Right. First pick of the season. Right. So, yeah. They, they don't... No. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. You know, it's, it's it, you, you have a um, situation here where, again, you're Cincinnati. And, and I like to look at the quarterbacks, especially. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because, you know, the NFL has a mold for their quarterback. You have the Flacco and um, quarterback. Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. So if you're like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you know. It's the model. And all of that. But yet, Mahomes is how tall. 
I think he's six. about six feet, maybe six yeah. one, maybe. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, and, and Drew Brees. So, so really, some of the top performers right now are not the big statues. Look, you know, we're gonna keep an eye on that. But uh, yeah, with uh, Cincinnati, that's a New Orleans game at seventy-three. Uh, bias plus score in their favor. Atlanta, Cleveland, Atlanta has a net point bias of fifty-nine points. Cleveland has a turnover margin bias. We talked about that earlier in a, in a previous show. Uh, they are number one in turnover margin. Uh, Cleveland has uh, plus 11 uh, turnover margin, and uh, Atlanta is plus three. So they're both in the plus, mm-hmm. and again, almost half of the turnovers in favor of the Browns came in that first game. Exactly, and they've been sitting on 11 for quite a while, if I'm not mistaken. Right, exactly. So, so as of right now, um, Atlanta has a, uh, it favors them with a bias plus score of 15. Okay, and Atlanta's cruising right along offensively. Defensively, they do have a lot of holes. Uh, I've noticed that, uh, you know, people aren't really talking about Baker Mayfield that much anymore, but he's putting up fairly good numbers for a first-time starting rookie quarterback. He's trying to hold his own. He just just can't. He doesn't have enough. uh, I should say the team doesn't have enough for him to, like, really carry them to victories. You know what I mean? He doesn't have the the, the coaching support. I mean, you well, don't exactly have. That's obvious. They fired the coach, coach, and now they got another coach, and they got another offensive coordinator. Now, I will say this, and I, this is a, this is a fantasy note. Duke Johnson. Everybody remember Duke Johnson? He's a running back for the Cleveland Browns. Okay, they don't went through Hyde. They went through. Uh, 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 what's the? I can't even think of what the other guy's name is. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah Everybody yeah, kind yeah. of forgot about Duke Johnson. So they elevate the running backs coach, I believe, to offensive coordinator. And Duke Johnson goes bananas last week. He had a great game. 100 something yards, nine catches. I think he scored two touchdowns. Is he more in the mold? He's the passing back. Fast? Yes. Okay. He's a passing back. But that's just, I'm saying, that was an element. Again, that was that dysfunction between the head coach and the offensive coordinator that didn't allow a big element or what should have been a big part of their offense to shine through. The guy wasn't getting touches. It's interesting when you have those different types of running backs on the team and, and how they use of, of And if you use them properly, you can have a true one-two punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, look, look at your Saints, you know, look at those guys. In any event, uh, what were we looking at here? Where is that? Uh, oh, we're at uh, – so anyway, yeah, we're picking Atlanta there. Matt Ryan's still cruising. And then we got the New England Tennessee game playing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I've seen them. Oh, here it is. So, New England, Tennessee. Now, New England has a, uh, a bias of 75 net points, bias plus of uh, 80 because they have a turnover margin bias in their favor of five. So, we're looking at uh, New England being favored. I'm real proud of Tennessee for going into Jerry World and taking care of the Cowboys. That's right. I'm somewhat impressed by that. Well, even though, I mean, straight up, I, I did not think that was going to happen. I thought the Cowboys would win that game. They had the bias. Yeah, they did. They had the bias. They did. And, yeah. and I thought Tennessee was very impressive. They stuck to their guns. They stuck to their game plan. And they outworked. They looked like they did more with their bye week than the Cowboys. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Uh, That being said, though. (laughs) The Cowboys had a Mark, you know, had a Mark Cooper on the brain. uh, Yeah. I think it threw them off a little bit. They they, they didn't didn't really have a game plan for the whole team. They had a Mark Cooper plan. (laughs) Well, I, I heard a couple of people say that they're in this funk of running Zeke on first down all the time. So now it's second and eight, second and six, second and five. Well, running Zeke on first down ain't bad if you're getting five yards, you know. If you're getting five yards every time. If you're getting five yards. But their line is in the first line. quarter. In the first quarter of the game, he took minus yards a couple of times. Now you're second and 12. Second. So in other words, they think the offense would be a bit more efficient if they threw on first down sometimes. Then they have the luxury 
of running him on second down and possibly picking up the first down and keep it rolling. There's nothing wrong with that at all, and that makes good sense. And one of the things that I heard also was that they could be throwing the ball to Zeke Moore, and they don't seem to think he has a hand. They're not the only team that doesn't do that, but yes. You know, but right. Right. You know if he if he he came in, what was what 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 was he in the draft? Oh, he went in the first round. He was in the first draft. draft. So yeah, if you if you're picking a running back in the third in the first round, mm-hmm. you figure you got to be able to catch. You'd be stupid. And he's the full package. Yeah, he's he the full package. He came in the full package. I mean, package. you're not using your full package. Right. You know, because like you said, you know, even if you just give him a quick dump off and let him, you know, yeah. get your three to five on first down, yeah. you're still now second and six, yeah. second and five, yeah. which is where you want to be, um, especially with this team. So, um, absolutely, absolutely. So, Tennessee, however, uh, they're going um, – they're home, they're, uh, the Patriots. And we've seen much of the Patriots um, – and uh, traveling yet this this season? I keep thinking like they. Well, let's put it this way. For them. They, Maybe it is. They they, they have been play. home a lot. It's funny that you did that said that. They have been home a lot, so they got a string of away games coming. Mm-hmm. Now they only got two losses. I'm sure one of those two was on the road, but they're going to be on the road quite a bit uh, starting this week. So um, that'll be interesting to watch, but. I think they got their they're they're in their groove now. You know what I mean? They're really in their groove now. Um, Sony Michelle should be back from his knee injury. So <laughs> again, it's the Patriots. It's freaking Bill Belichick. Never seems to, never ceases to amaze me. He takes Cordero Patterson. <laughs> okay. A mediocre receiver with a physical freak of a body. Puts him at running back and is able to spell James White and get yardage and move the ball. Cowboys can't do it with their first round. They can't do back. it with their first round running back. <laughs> the guy puts in uh, and they put in his and he's big he's bigger than Eric Dickerson was. This guy's big. when he's running, you're like, whoa, that look, it looks funny handing off the ball to him. Okay. One guy was holding his shirt, his shirt, and he's dragging him. I'm like, I would have never thought of that. Wasn't him at running back? Really? Creativity. You know, it's funny because you don't. It's New England. It's amazing. The, the word creativity in New England Patriots, somehow you don't think about it like that, but right. they are so creative. Absolutely. They do. Yes, they are. And their deployment of resources, as yep. you might say. I, was, I mentioned earlier um, what they do with ex Eagles. You know, they take Kenyon Barner, who I had no I no. I could not understand why the Eagles let him go. He was a security blanket on special teams for them. Okay, you could he could take punts, he could take kickoffs. He was a gunner going down when they punted the kick. He didn't fumble. Right. And next thing you know, he's gone. Right. Right. The the, uh, the Patriots pick him up. Right. They have him in at running back, and they're showing highlights of him picking up the blitz. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're like he's an expert at picking up the blitz, and I'm like. So the Eagles gave up an expert at picking up the blitz. He goes to New England. Yep. What can I say? What can I say? Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, On our chart here, they're in red. That means that they're in the negative and net points. And Indianapolis is in the positive. So the bias net points goes to Indianapolis at, at 54. They have a bias plus and a turnover margin of 10, giving them, I'm sorry, Indianapolis has a top bias plus a turnover margin of 14. Ah, yes. And that gives them a uh, bias plus plus score of 68. And Indianapolis coach favor of 68. Yeah. That's kind of intriguing to me because, again, we had so much. We thought Jacksonville was going to be Jacksonville. like Everybody, everybody did. And, Don't. And be a real contender this right. year. Right. Don't pretend <laughs> you, you knew this was coming. Everybody was expecting the, the challenge with Jacksonville is right now they are 30th in turnover differential with minus 11. Mm. They're still 7th in, in defense. They've only given up 170 points. I'm not sure if they have a uh, bye week helping them out with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, they're 30th in scoring with 134 points. So this is like the tale of two quarterbacks where you got Bortles bortling it up and you have Luck coming back Mm -hmm. 
you know, looking like the luck that they want him to be, that, that they, when they drafted him. You know, right. Back to form. Right. You know, uh, and still having completely built the team around him. He's got guys coming off of injuries too, T.Y. Hilton, uh, his tight end, Jack Doyle. Uh, the defense is kind of patchwork, but he's able to carry them to victory, at least enough where they're in the plus in the power rankings. That's what they're sure. six in scoring. Okay, they scored 231, however. I think that's extremely impressive, considering this guy's coming back from a broken wing. Right. right. You know, throwing uh, baby balls and yeah. stuff like that. But they're 20th on defense. They're giving up 213. Which is to be expected. Uh, Jacksonville is 7th on defense. So their defense hasn't really fallen off. But again, when you're turning over the ball the way that they're turning over, and when you have such poor and erratic quarterback play, the board was delivering to them right now, it, it makes it difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Bortles don't, doesn't always play bad. I mean, he's, he's having a good day. So if he gets his act together, this could be a game. That's why I think it's intriguing. What is Jack? Because we're talking playoff lining up. Now they're lining up for the playoff position now. Playoff positioning, I guess I should say. You know, I think they're in last place in the division. But you could win two or three games and, you know. True. Nobody's running away with it. Right, exactly. So, you know. <laughs> I just think it's intriguing. I'm just I'm just interested to see what Jacksonville does. Because if they go in there and if the Colts just bang them, just go in there and smash them, then, you know, that's pretty much it. You're going to start to see maybe trades and movements and things like that. Yeah, you, you never know. know. That could happen. So just like I said, I couldn't call the Carolina-Pittsburgh game, and I went with the rankings to, to help support my, my pick. I'm not going to use the rankings at all to support this pick. I'm just going to say the Jaguars are going to snap out of it this week, and they're going to get the win. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be impressive. I'm not saying it's going to be a blowout. I'm going to say that they're going to win this game. Now, on your way over here, did you maybe fall? <laughs> no. Larry Fournette's coming back. Talk about security blankets. That's a big one for Borders. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. It's, it, I know without, it's weak, without Fournette, they were they were floundering, impotent. It, yeah, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> so with him, you know, um, that that should be a big help. Yes. Um, and like you said, Indianapolis's defense isn't exactly stellar, right? And Jacksonville's you know, can be, and Jacksonville and should be. be. Okay. With, with with some help from a little ball control offense. Going which they against, should get going against the uh, going against the bias plus there. All right, Arizona, mm. Cardinals, Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs has a 190 net point bias and a turnover margin bias of 10, giving them a bias plus score in the favor mm. of Kansas City of 200. And yet, it's not the largest bias plus of the weekend. However, I don't see Arizona, and they are uh, one of the negative. They're in the negative. That's why they're yeah. The so, so, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't see it either. The, the the only reason it's not the biggest bias plus is because the Arizona defense actually, yeah, shows can up. put up a fight, right? You know, right. And, and especially when they play my Niners, they seem to. Oh yeah, well, you know, hey, that's they seem to get their act the together. Uh and scoring their thirty first and and points against their thirteenth. Yeah. So see, you that's... know now as opposed to Kansas City who's first in scoring and twenty fifth in defense. Right. But they are far and away first in scoring. Far and away. That's the scoring. difference. So that differential is gonna be hard to overcome. Moving right along, the Bills are going into New York to visit the Jets. The Jets have a 130 net point bias, which is hard to do when both teams are in the negative. <laughs> that means one team that one really, team is really in the negative, really in the negative, uh, and they have a turnover margin bias of four, giving the New Jersey Nets Jets. J E T S, not N E T S. <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> a bias plus score in the Jets game of 134. Dude, that's huge for both teams to be in a negative. 
Come on. Wait, wait, let me let me let me look at this here. Buffalo. They that bad. Is a minus one hundred and forty five net points. And the Jets are only minus fifteen. There you go. See, that's yeah. Uh I tell you what. I don't think if you're watching uh, Red Zone, you're going to see a bunch of highlights from this game. And Sam Darnold really did not do well for himself last week. So I'm hoping he plays a little bit better. The Buffalo defense is in total disarray. And running their offense is a guy that everybody on TV is not calling Peterman. And I don't mean Peterman like his name. I mean Peter Mann. That's what they're calling. They're calling him Peter Mann. You know, that's so embarrassing. But it's that bad. Well, again, and we argued about this before uh, a little bit, but my question was, why is he on the team? Yeah, I know. You know know why he's on the team? Because the guy they wanted to start and the guy they drafted is hurt. And the guy behind him is hurt. Come on, coming out of preseason. Somebody has to play. Coming out of last season. Before this situation (laughs) even came about, they had him signed. He and had a they, nice contract. They didn't want to bring anybody else in. He threw five interceptions in the first half last season. Well, they didn't know he was going to do it again. Well, they didn't. That's what I'm saying. That's my point <laughs> with the coaching or the general managers. And they they didn't see him for what he is. I will How admit. How do you miss that? I will admit. You saw it. There's no doubt about it. You cast disparagement on this guy from the jump based on what he did last year. I'm sure they were thinking, well, he's been around for a little while. I, I gave all the reasons why they – watching them through the preseason. Man, 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 I didn't keep line. him. They kept him. I was just trying to think of why would they keep him to answer your question. But it's obvious that it was a mistake. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets here. Washington is going to go into Tampa Bay and hopefully redeem themselves a little bit. And Are you act hoping? Like they want to – well, you know, I like to see the Eagles get a little bit of a challenge from somebody. I thought they were going to be that challenge. Then the Falcons walked over them. I don't know about this bias. 56 points isn't a lot. No. But that's because, you know, again, let's look at it. Tampa Bay, right? Where are they? Okay. Tampa Bay, minus 46 points. Washington is minus 12. Oh, and scoring, Washington is 25th, but the eighth on defense, and the sixth in turnover margins. Tampa Bay, as we know, in scoring, they can put up the points, but they're seventh in scoring, but they're 32nd in defense. Alex Smith, come on. You should be able to go in there and get the job done. I'm picking Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Fell off the bus coming over here. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm picking Tampa Bay. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Number one, I don't think Fitzpatrick is going to have a lot of trouble with their defense. It's been good. It has not been great. Number two, oh, and and most importantly, you know they lost three starters just oh, last yeah. week's they game. Did have, they did. They got Both guards an and a safety. Yeah. Okay, that's a problem, and they're going to Florida. I think can they can put up the points like they've been doing, not throw a whole bunch of picks, they can pull this one out. Should be a pretty exciting game, actually. We shall keep an eye on it, but again, these are two teams that are in the negative that are trying to get it together. Ah, we have a California matchup here with the currently L.A. still Chargers. And they currently still in California. Raiders. Mm-hmm. The Chargers have a 210 net point bias in their favor and a 22 uh, turnover margin bias in their favor, giving them the largest bias plus score of the weekend at 232 uh, in the favor of the Chargers. Don't think that this should be an issue. It won't be. Uh, the Rams are looking their wounds a little bit. I'm sure they went into that Saints game with a lot of confidence. Rams. Huh? I'm sorry. I, oh, I did that's that. right. Yeah. I'm yeah. so Chargers. And I and I didn't change my thing. It's actually the Chargers. Yeah. Um, 
you, you rethink now. Yeah. The charges are actually right. I have to go back because, again, like I said earlier, the charges, charges are kind of coming the charts. They went into Seattle. They went into Seattle against your sleeper team. Against my said, sleeper you know squad. This team is known for their defense, but we're going to show off on these boys. And they did. Um, Seattle had a 13 net point bias or a 13 bias plus in their favor, which is really nothing. That's not much. It's no, really that's much. not much. But I, I think that the efficiency that uh, Philip Rivers has been showing for most of his career, let alone this year, is is amazing. And it seems like as he gets older, he gets better. Uh, there was a big question the other day. The guy said, that if he just decided to retire tomorrow, would you vote for him for the Hall of Fame? And the guy's like, oh, man, I don't know. It's really close. And this guy hasn't won any Super Bowls. He hasn't even been in a Super Bowl. The other so thing that they have good going for them is running back. Melvin Gordon. And he was a little dinged last week. Okay. Just I, a little. I kind of remember him performing nicely. Well, what time. happened was he got hurt uh, the week they went. He didn't play in uh, London. Okay. Then they had the bye week. Okay. Then he came back. Okay. So, um, Melvin Gordon. Wisconsin. Yes. With our boy Corey Clement. Hey man, them Wisconsin boys is doing all right. James White's having a good year, too. Man, man. Miami. Green Bay. So, they're coming up from the nice, uh, oh. beautiful weather in Miami to Green Bay. I think they've already had snow. And <laughs> There's already snow happening. in Those Miami guys are not going to like that. Uh, Green Bay has a 26 net point bias in their favor. But Miami... Has a turnover margin bias of six in their favor, dropping the bias plus score down to 20, but it is in Green Bay's favor. And we in Green Bay right now, as long as they can stay out of a situation where that one turnover dooms them, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they could probably that's, that's, be okay. That's what it seems like, yeah. But yeah, they get that one turnover, man, and then Rodgers is on the sideline going, I can do this. Oh, sorry. Can't do nothing from the sideline. <laughs> it's one thing. If you can keep the quarterback on the sideline, I don't care how good he is. Can't do a thing. So, I think I'm probably guilty of it, too, but I'm really looking at it in hindsight. We, we overhyped that game last week between the Packers and the Patriots. I think we really overhyped. I don't that think game. we did. I think the world did. I think. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, it, it but when you really Brady think about it, after you Rogers. look at the game, you go, you know what? Why was I so excited about this game? I wasn't that excited. The I mean, Patriots are, are a superior team to them right now. Oh no doubt about it. Uh, last last week, what was it? Uh, Fifty-five bias plus score in the Patriots' favor. However, Green Bay has what we call in in, in the business a get-right game. Okay. Miami Dolphins are coming to town with like lamb chops hanging around their necks, stepping into the lion's den. You want to see some Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> Watch him this week. <laughs> it's going it's to be crazy. You know, it's funny. They were, they were comparing the, the, the two quarterbacks in the performance test week and talking about how um, Brady is so much in control in the pocket, quick passes. And if, if any, if, check out our Twitter feed, uh, mm -hmm. Ben and Barry on football, because I had to go on Twitter. I, had, I went on Twitter and I said, the Patriots are running the hurry up like it's a Madden game. Yeah. I mean, literally like it was a Madden game. Yeah. They already run a quick offense. They'll come anyway. to, to the line of scrimmage really fast anyway. Yep. But they were doing it like very consciously last week. Mm -hmm. and I mean... The, the Green Bay defense was not able to catch up right. with them. And next thing you know, they're down. You know what I mean? And so, and yet they felt that Aaron Rodgers in the two different systems, you know, where Brady was so systemic in terms of the way he was approaching it, Rodgers was so much more, um, um, what's the word, where you're, you're making it up as you go along. Oh, yeah, I got you. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and you know, he's rolling out, he's looking for people, whatever. Right, but he's really good at that. He's really good at it, but let's face it, efficiency happens at a better rate when you're getting the ball out your hands right away. Well, absolutely. When, when the, yeah. Know, and, and, you know, and again, I that's what we talked about when I was saying, when I played 
and I'm doing Madden and playing Madden, playing with the Niners, and I'm mm-hmm. playing with C.J. Beathard, mm-hmm. I know I got to get the ball out quick because I know my line isn't that great. Right. You know what I mean? So you can't hold on to that ball, and if you're going to throw a deep ball, it has to be set up, you know, and then when it happens, it happens. But um, in this particular case, who do you like? Ah, great day. I'm going with the bias. Seattle and the Rams, a division game. The Rams have a 67, which I thought was rather small, net point bias in their favor. And Seattle has to turn up a margin bias of two. Rams are a bias plus score in their favor of 65. Mm-hmm. And the division games are weird. Weird things happen in the division games. That's true. But now I'm going to say what I started to say when I thought that they were playing Oakland. But in fact, they are playing Seattle and they are at home. And that is, again, we got to get right game. The Rams are going to, I don't know. Is Pete Carroll on the hot seat? Is he securing his job? I think he's, I, I don't see why I hope he is. I think that, this, they're, they're going to be second in the division. Yeah, true. They still have a shot at the playoffs. True. He's not true. out of it at all. True. So, you know, I don't think that he's. Okay. This one could get embarrassing is what I'm so. thinking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, considering that we're thinking, well, you know, Seattle's kind of hanging in there because their defense is still, I mean, it's nowhere near what it used to be when it was Legion of Boom, but it, they're keeping them in games and they've been a little unlucky, you know, ball. The run game's not bad now. Run game, game's not that bad. Uh, but, yeah, I think this one might get away from them. Seattle is uh, 11th in net points. They've got their plus 33, uh, 32, rather. Uh, the Rams are second plus 99. Uh, but I will say Seattle is fourth in defense, and the Rams are 14th. So, you know, Seattle might be able to put some points up on the board. You know, Russell, Russell doing this thing, talking about the – I cannot think of that word. What's the word that I'm thinking about where he's making it up as we go along? I cannot think of that word. It's going to come to me right after the show. After the show is over. <laughs> It'll be over. I'll be like – Everybody that can watch this probably go, ad the lib? word ad lib, yeah. <laughs> Where's ad lib, dummy? <laughs> okay. So, uh, we're going with the bias there. Yep. And you think it could be even worse. Yeah, I think it might be awful. Case. Yeah. All right. And I think this one. Speaking of division games. To my chagrin might be awful. Thinking about get right games. I think the Eagles are going to be trying to get right here. Uh, they they are hosting Dallas. The Dallas Cowboys have to come in after that embarrassing loss to the Tennessee Titans and all the questions that came. You know, you're talking about people on the hot seat. That's that's the coach that's on the hot seat. That's true. You know. Yeah, Jason Carrick's got to, Yeah, he's he's got to be in a little bit of trouble. That's and, and then big questions now about Dak. Is he the guy that we thought he was? He's not the guy. Uh, they're going to defend Dak to the end. They're going to point at other things, but. He showed me some things in that game that were not characteristic of him. And you can say that the team's not playing as well as they were because of this or because of that, but he made some foolish mistakes. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, so the Philadelphia Eagles are have a bias plus in their favor of 16, not much. Not much, but the Eagles – are feeling good about themselves, and Dallas has to be feeling really bad about themselves. They well, the should not have, have lost their the division game. and go, you know, oh, we got to yeah, do Yeah, nobody this. wants it. Nobody, wants, it, nobody you know. wants this. We might as well take it. It's like the old um, Three Stooges thing where they got the every, they're the soldiers and they're all lined up, mm-hmm. and they're like, I need a volunteer, and everybody steps, steps back. back. <laughs> <laughs> and guys standing there like, uh-huh. uh-huh. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. That's, That's right. basically what's going on here. So, yeah. Especially if the, if the Redskins lose again. I mean, it's kind of crazy. But you didn't notice I didn't say anything about the Giants. <laughs> We'll talk about that in a moment. No, will we? Oh, yeah, I guess we will. Yeah, um, we will, yeah baby. I'm going to go with the bias, and all, as small as it is, and take the Eagles at home, feeling good, hating Dallas. Crowd's going to be in an uproar. <laughs> Man. I, oh, if they blow them out, if they blow Dallas out, talk radio is going to be crazy this week. And um, I just want to see some shots of the um, – the visitor's box of Jerry Jones. I'll be sitting here looking. Oh, oh, oh. I like to see that. I like to see okay, that. Okay, okay. 
All right. So you're going with the, the bias here and Philly. Yes. All right. And the last game of the weekend, the biggest, best, most content. All right, it's the it's, it's the Giants and my Niners. His Giants, my Niners, Mullen, Nick, in time. You guys got to come to us. You're going to come out, and you're going to have to deal with the hottest quarterback. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> come on, man. The Niners have a 23 net point bias. Woo. Giants have a nine turnover margin. Ooh, Lions. watch out. Bringing that bias plus score down to 14. In right, the which is basically Niners. nothing. However, you are going from one coast to the... Wait a minute. No, it, it, it that usually way? works the other way. Yeah. And if it's a late game, that works even more in the Giants' favor. It'll be Monday night. <laughs> they got like it's Monday night. Weekend. There you go, see? So that's good. over the So turn. that won't have anything to do time. with it. However... Because I want the Giants to win, I'm not going to pick them. <laughs> no, I, I, I like the Niners in this the Giants picks right. I, I, I never do. <laughs> and, I, and hopefully I won't get this one right either. But I'm, I'm going to go with the bias, and I'm going to go with the 49ers. I think they really got that something. That could be the kiss of death. No, I mean, I think they really got something in Mullen. I like that guy, man. I watched him play. I'm like, I'm waiting for this cat to screw up. And he actually looked really cool. You know the only time he looked nervous? Was the interview after the game? He almost cried. Yeah, he almost cried. Yeah, like yeah. this dude came off a of practice squad, man. But you know, he had the eye of the tiger, man. And, and, and I looked at, you know, I watched him in the this pregame. This is why I'm a Niner fan because I can look uh, and we connect on that level, and I can see. I can say, wait a minute. They were showing him in the pregame game, and he was just playing catch. He didn't have his pads on or nothing, and he just kind of had that look. Mm -hmm. He did have that. Yeah, that quarterback look. Yeah, and I'm thinking. First, I thought he was a rookie. Then they said actually his rookie season was last year, but he spent most of it on and off the practice squad and was on the practice squad when they called him up. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, they kept him around for some reason, but you never expect your first two guys to go down and have to go to third string. And obviously, they didn't think it because he was on the practice squad. He wasn't actually a third string quarterback. Did you hear the stories about how he has prepped himself, though? Like what? When they get the – Because he said, you know, I always game prepare plan as if I'm going to start. When they get the yes. game plan, he runs through the whole – without the team. Yes. On his own, runs through the whole thing on yes. his own. He knows everything. Just like you said, like he was going to play. And, and, he and was that's what he said, yes. And he does that kind of stuff, and it's extraordinary that it showed up because, again, he played – I'm going to say Mahomes like. In other words – the ball got out of his hands quick. It was decisive. You know, yep. I don't care how bad of a receiver you are, you're going to be open at some point. Even if, if the guy's 10 yards off and you're just coming off the line, the ball comes out quick enough and you catch it at the five, you got a five-yard completion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was hilarious. On um, Good Morning Football, mm -hmm. they were talking about, they were trying to, they were using the, uh, the political thing, talking about the players. Okay, and who should run for president or whatever. Uh, and they were, and the guy uh, was talking about Mahomes. And he's like, yeah, he said, he's a phony. He said, he said that we keep hearing about he can throw the 80 yard pass. But look at this five yards pass, it goes 80 yards. <laughs> he's not throwing no 80 yards. Pass. It's fake news, <laughs> you know. But if you can, and that's what I was saying yeah. about, uh, about CJ, you know, you got to be more, uh, 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 you, you got to make that decision and get that ball out of your hands with right. a little more timing. Your line's not that great, right. okay? So, you know, you, you, you know that deep ball, it comes when it comes, right. you know? And it, and the run game, it got to depend on the run game. Speaking of run game, our, you know, we, we're all a favorite of your running back, Saquon, quote, the gift, Barkley. And you know what I thought about? They... If you look across at all the rookie quarterbacks, those first round quarterbacks that everybody was so high in one, and you guys are getting really getting beaten up for not taking a quarterback. Still, still. You know, but none of them guys are really running the league. You know, it's not like they you would have brought in any of those five guys and all of a sudden the Giants would have been that much better. Right, but people are still saying that it was a mistake. Well how they're saying it, I, I understand 
in what context they're saying, okay? But I still think it wasn't a mistake. This kid, I don't think it was a mistake picking up Saquon Barkley. You got, you had to get him because he is special. He's you don't have a special. shot at a quarterback. There's some quarterbacks that are coming out in this draft, right? And but there won't be another one of him in a long time, right? And, and I hate to say it, you guys will probably be in a position to get him. Yeah, we probably will. Trust the process. Trust. So, Monster is hurt. Oh, I felt so bad. Yeah, I know he's out for the season. Oh. But, but Rita was back, but he didn't get a lot of run because Monster was playing so well. So now he's got a kind of another week of rest under his belt. So he should probably start this week. Do you know that Mars, Alfred Mars, is 50, one of the top 50 running backs of all time? In terms of, I think yardage or something. Get like out of here! I looked it no, up. No, he's not. I was. No, I don't believe it. I tell you what, I'll do. You made a mistake. I tell you what, I'll do. I was on one of the websites. I think it was yardage the football database. Yardage. I think it was yardage or something it's like total that. Total yards or rushing yards? He was. Again, I'll, I'll next show. Next show. Okay. I will. I'll, I'll the information that I saw. Because when I saw his name, I was like, you know, first of all, he hasn't played long enough. But he's fifty. It's not like it's not like he's like the top ten or anything. He was fifty, but he was fifty in the top fifty. And I was just so surprised to see his name there. I'm shocked that you're even saying it. Uh, I, I, I will please, show you. Please show me the evidence. Please show in the next show. Yes. Well, that wraps up the matchup for the week. Uh, Benny, we usually have a uh, either our rant. Or any anything else that you might want to mention? Comments, questions, concerns before we sign off. I have a bit of a rant. Last year, I uh, held on to a particular rant for quite a while. The Tennessee Titans had a so-called committee backfield of Demarco Murray and Derrick Henry, and Demarco Murray was running like an old man, and then Derrick Henry would come in. The rip off a couple of six, eight, ten yard runs, and then they take him out and put DeMarco Murray back in. And I'm jumping up and down and banging the coach over the head saying, what the hell are you doing? It's obvious that this guy should be starting, and this guy should be backing him up, if playing at all. So they let DeMarco Murray go. He retires. I think he's working on FS1 now as a commentator. But... They still like the committee backfield, so they bring in Deion Lewis, a much smaller guy in stature. Bring him in from the New England Patriots. Well, guess who's the lead back? Freaking Deion Lewis. Derrick Henry you. couldn't run through this piece of paper. I asked What's you. wrong with you? I asked you, 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 and earlier I said, who's the power back on that team? Who is the power? <laughs> this the power dude is back? like 6'4". 245 he or something. He did have a couple good runs. A couple. He, and it was one, Dude, one good run he had. He ran and took, when it took him like 15 yards. But, oh, jeez. But the bulk of all the runs went to Dion, man. I mean, Dion bowling people. It's a him. classic case of a dude who depends on his size more than his actual running ability. Mm-hmm. If you watch him run, watch, watch a good back run and watch him run. And you'll know why to get that name, Tiptoe Burglar. He doesn't pick his feet up. He's used to being bigger than other people and kind of knocking them off. Yeah, well, dudes, when they see him get the ball, they know how to hit him now. They get him below the waist. They hit his legs. Falls right over. Falls right over. No balance. You won't see him hurdling over people like Kareem Hunt. And he's not, he ain't got that. Sometimes I wish he would just, just run. Just run. Well, see, and then again, again when you got for guys a like that, run. You you know you gotta you know I don't know if you're gonna, if you need to run a zone uh, blocking scheme for him it's just so he can just run because you gotta get him moving in a direction where his power. I, I have to assume maximum. they're still running the same blocking scheme that they ran last year. That was the, the running game. It was their main focus. Bro, that is their focus, and they're gonna need that run. <laughs> no, it ain't the blocking scheme. It's him. <laughs> I'm done with this guy. All right. Well, that wraps up Ben and Barry on football. Ben's had his rant, so I don't have a rant for this week. Uh, again, oh, 
we didn't go through our social media. Run it down, bro. So Run it let's down. Share real quick. Know something? We did it on the last show. Yes, we did. So, so we don't have to do that here. Let's just say you can find the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings on Facebook mm -hmm. at Sterling NPPR. You can find the Ben and Barry on Football page, Facebook page. Also, we have a Twitter account, Ben and Barry on Football. And I finally have my Sterling Net Point Power Rankings Twitter page up there. Separate Twitter page for the power ranking. Separate Twitter page for Excellent. the power ranking. Excellent. Yes, yes. Because um, I do a little bit, we do, we do some different things on Ben and Barron football. For example, we like to highlight um, the community work. Yes. That's going on. You know, so whenever I, we see anything about, you know, players or owners or coaches going out into the community, you know, whether it's Halloween, whether it's Thanksgiving and giving out turkeys and all of that. Right. But people tend to forget that these guys do a lot of stuff off camera, right? You know, and again, right. football being a, a sport where you got a helmet on, you don't always know what a person looks like per right. se. They might walk by you on the street, you might not know who exactly. I'm, you know, because we just talked about Dion, right? Um, yeah. If he walked by me on the street, I, I wouldn't might know. Not, 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 may not know. So we like to talk about that on Ben and Barry football, and then you can always go directly to the website, Ben and Barry on Football .com which at this point will take you directly to our YouTube page. Everybody okay? Barry Sterling Mitchell signing off. Ben Dickerson saying, go knows. Go knows.